5 o'clock hour, I'd like to convene the Committee of the Whole of City Council November 28th and ask for a roll call, please. Jacobson? Here. Finucane? Marquardt? Here. Snow? Here. Noriko? Here. Baker? Favor? Here. Ray? Here. Six present? Thank you. Um, our first consideration this evening is the Wells Fargo banking commitments. I'll turn to Finance Director Kathy Haley. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, staff had received a question regarding uh, any holdings that the city may have with Wells Fargo, and the question was raised whether uh, the city might follow or look to follow the states of Illinois and Cal California and perhaps no longer conduct business with Wells Fargo based on their lack of fiduciary responsibility to their customers. The city does not have any direct relationships with Wells Fargo. However, we do have one certificate of deposit that we currently have in our investment um, pool uh, that would expire or does expire November of 2017. It's a $248,000 CD which um, is fully FDIC insured. FDIC insurance goes up to $250,000. Uh, we could certainly terminate this CD early. There would be a potential loss of about $248. So with that said, and based on this information, staff feels that at this point, if uh, the determination by city council or we'd be looking for direction from city council, how they might want to handle if we were to um, be posed with a possible another investment opportunity from Wells Fargo through our broker and how you might like want us to handle that. Okay. Um, discussion from council. Alderman Snow. Um, I guess I'm in favor of, of continuing the investment. I think investment decisions should be made for sound business reasons and investment reasons and not for the so-called political correctness. I think we go down that road and we're going to be seeing a lot more uh, people ask for uh, changes in policy based on what's kind of commonly termed as political correctness. I, I think we should make our decisions on bound, sound business practices and, and that's what we've done. Thank you. Alderman Favor. So I, I'll add to the list. Um, I, first thing is I don't recommend getting out of our uh, certificate of deposit. Um, but since that letter was written, the uh, other states have been California, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Ohio, and Oregon. San Francisco, the home of Wells Fargo corporate offices, has chosen to no longer do business with Wells Fargo as well. Um, Los Angeles and Seattle have also chosen that. Um, the point in bringing that up was that if we have the opportunity or the option of choosing a different bank, I would prefer that we, you know, that would, to me, that would be the policy, would be to choose a bank who does represent uh, its clients, who does hold a fiduciary responsibility to their clients as opposed to their own personal financial well-being. Alderman, or Alderwoman, Mariko. I would not be in favor of, um, you know, taking out the money early, um, especially given some of our budget discussions. Admittedly, $248 is not significant, but I think you know, in terms of the message. Um, I would recommend that at the point, um, if we are presented with um, other investment opportunities with Wells Fargo, I would look carefully and skeptically at those. Um, you know, that may, I don't know how often those come up. Um, I would think the issue might be different five years from now versus five months from now. So um, I would consider that a careful decision. Okay. Other thoughts or, or input that others would like? Alderman Jacobson. I certainly understand where Alderman Faber is coming from. If we had a direct banking relationship with them and they were our banker, I would probably be certainly asking us to look elsewhere, being that it's a CD, and we're basically putting these out onto the market for the purposes of getting 
the best return rate at this point I wouldn't advocate pulling it from a CD either again it's a business decision it's not massive amounts of money we're talking a couple hundred dollars but in terms that it was a CD that was put out and is sitting out there paying us a decent interest rate and, and pulling it and putting it back into the market right now in a much lower interest climate I, I again I think the the safest bet right now is to leave it sit and reassess in the future where our relationships with this bank or any other bank that has proven less than spectacular in terms of customer support should be. Okay. Any other comments? I'm hearing consensus to use some discretion and in, in judgment in um, evaluating Wells Fargo among other um, financial institutions. Kathy, do you have enough indication of criteria to add to the factors that have been listed? I, I believe so. Okay. Not seeing further comment, we'll move on then um, to the composting pilot project. I'll turn to Public Works Director Tim Holdman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. We're bringing before you this evening uh, for your consideration a food scrap pilot compost, uh, co food scrap composting pilot program. Uh, this program will be at no cost uh, to the city. It is a pilot program uh, that we're running in order to gauge the interest of our community in composting. And we recognize that uh, having a composting program will contribute towards the sustainability of our community and it will reduce um, landfill space uh, that's taken up by compostable uh, waste currently. Uh, the city will be joined by the DeKalb County Health Department and our current residential refuse collection vendor, Waste Management, in this pilot program. Uh, the program will run in 2017 and the results could be used then uh, in considering our contract for uh, a new vendor or potentially new vendor in 2018. Uh, Michelle Gibson, who is the solid waste expert from uh, solid waste specialist from the DeKalb County Health Department is here uh, to give a, a presentation along with Vaughn Kirshner, who is the uh, public sector representative for waste management. So I'll turn it over to them. Uh, for their presentation, and then we'll answer questions at the end. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Mayor, um, council members, and staff, thank you for having us tonight, and good evening. Um, as Tim said, the Organics Pilot is to assist the city in becoming a more sustainable community uh, by diverting the compostable waste from the landfill. Um, DeKalb would be on the forefront of this movement, there aren't a lot of programs in place right now. Um, there's a lot of discussion among communities, but not a lot of programs uh, set up. Uh, Oak Park is probably the, uh, the prototypical example of a successful program. Um, ongoing communication and education is vitally important uh, in this program. It helps residents, of course, understand the program, as well as minimizing contamination. Uh, contamination, you'll hear several times throughout our presentation, is probably the key for the success of this program after, of course, education. And participation will be key to program continuation. In other words, level of resident participation and, again, the contamination of the material. Um, so you probably want to know why collecting food scraps is important. So one of the reasons that we want to do this is 
definitely because of what Tim said is that we want to reduce the space that we take up in the landfill. But we also want to do this to add nutrients back into the soil. Um, we want to help save water. When you, when you add compost back to the soil, you can reduce the amount of evaporation, so the amount of watering that you need. Um, it also replaces nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and other things that are in fertilizers. So it reduces the amount of fertilizers that we need to add to our, our lawns. Um, this is something that you can do at home on your own, and I'm sure some of you already do do it, but we wanted to open it up wider to the public. So we're, we're working with waste management to collect the food scraps, and then they can create the compost, which residents can get back, or um, they, can, they can buy in different ways. And this way they don't have to buy compost, or I'm sorry, they don't have to buy fertilizer. Um, also, when you separate out your food scraps from the rest of your waste, um, I've noticed when I've done it in the past that it lets you look at how much food are you wasting. And so one of the main things we want to do in, in my position is to reduce the amount of waste going to landfill. So when you reduce the amount of food waste, you can reduce um, your overall trash by up to 21 percent. You can tell we're tag teaming it here. So. Um, as we look at doing the pilot, we're looking at a target area roughly of Dresser Road, Ridge Drive, Normal Road, and First Street, just kind of that square. We're looking to get about 100 participants. That's our goal. Um, the service will be from April 1st through November 30th. If that sounds familiar, that's our yard waste season. So that's when the program would, would run. Participating residents would receive a 64-gallon gray cart, and the gray cart would designate the yard waste and organics being mixed together. Um, pickup would be on a regular, regular scheduled service day, no difference in service day. And one of the things, again, that we're going to stress is uh, no bags in the collection. Bags are a definite contaminant uh, in the organics program. So. Just to kind of go back now that we have our, our slides are working now, um, one of the things, and this is big for Vaughn and for me, is that we don't want contamination. So this looks, this is a picture of just what a good load looks like. And um, it's food, it's all food. And that's all we want, we want food. We don't want wrappers, we don't want Dorito bags, things like that. So the way that I partner with waste management is to educate the public about this. So to get involved when there's any issues with contamination, to make sure that they know ahead of time, you know, what what they're doing. Um, just to give a little, a little background on why this, even though this is a city initiative, why did we um, part, why did the waste management, the city of DeKalb, and the county partner? Um, let's see, sorry, I wanna get back on track with our slides. This was just a quick map to show you the neighborhood that is being chosen. It's um, between First, Ave First Street and, um, Dresser and, sorry, I can't read, <laughs> Ridge and Normal, it's hard to read there, um, just in case you wanted to know what the chosen neighborhood was. So the way that we'll start the program is that we'll do a voluntary survey with residents to see who's interested in this. And um, the way that we want to gauge the knowledge and you know what their interest level is ahead of time, um, and this way we'll get contact information from residents, we'll have community meetings to educate them ahead of time, and we'll be communicating throughout, throughout the pilot with residents. Um, this is some of the educational material that waste management has developed uh, to let everyone know what they can uh, compost. And it does have some non-food items like um, some disposable wear. There, there is compostable service wear that you can you can put in with the food, but you have to buy special stuff. So we we will kind of tread lightly with that, whether recommending that, because we don't want to see like plastic spoons end up in our waste. Um, okay, so um, one of the reasons that we're involved is because we have the position of, of working with the um, with the community more directly than, say, the public works director as far as getting the educational information out there. Uh, the reason that this whole pilot came about is because 
the DeKalb County Board designated a zero waste task force to um, study and analyze ways that we can reduce waste going to the landfill. And this was one of their top three priorities was to compost food waste. Um, they, they saw other communities doing it. Uh, waste management has worked with a community, um, Oak Park, in the Chicago area, and they started a pilot there, and it's just working really well. They've gotten over a 1,000 residents involved in the program. Uh, there's communities in Lake County that are also doing this. And so as of um, spring of 2017, uh, there will be 20 communities in Illinois either doing pilot programs or having a full-fledged food collection program. So we have other communities that we're basing our program off of. We're not exactly like them, but we have, um, we have information to feed off of that we can use for our program. So if you take a look at this slide, um, the picture in the slide, um, that is a picture of actually a contaminated compost load. And so that's what we want to avoid. And that's why um, we keep saying education, communication is so vital um, because any type of contamination in, um, in the organics program, if it's continual and ongoing, um, it could result in a suspension or cancellation of the program. Because if, if we get it in, if it keeps coming in, it's ongoing, it affects our composting facility, which is um, and I have Mike Wersma from uh, the composting facility here. He's the manager. He can explain a little bit more if you have questions, but it's you know, very much regulated just like a landfill. So contamination is, is highly critical. Um, I mentioned just a minute ago about uh, education communication. What's also important, too, is to have a champion um, for the program. And you know, that you know, is something that uh, you know, Michelle can can start off with, but then if the city has a champion for it, it's so important. In Oak Park, they have one person that's just very active, constantly communicating with those 1,000 uh, residents that are currently participating in the program, just keeping it in front, front of them, telling them what's happening and what they need to do. Uh, what we plan to do is weekly review each load to determine participation contamination levels. Pictures will also be taken, and all this information will be shared you know, with residents and with the city. Uh, we have three target dates. We'll do a pilot baseline, of course, right at the beginning of the program, just to kind of gauge, uh, get an idea, um, what is the participation, what's the contamination level. Uh, then we'll do a midpoint sometime in August. Uh, it'll be one load. Um, again, just to, again, level set where we are with participation and contamination. And then, of course, at the end of the program, which is at the end of November, we'll take a look at, you know, you know, uh, our, our results then compare all three dates as well as other information we've collected throughout the yard waste season and now yard waste compost season. And then we'll evaluate those and share them with, uh, with the city. So <clears throat> at this time, you know, we'd like to take any questions that you might have. Um, we've left, left our contact information there too if you if you don't have questions now, you think of some later. Alder Woman, Norego. So uh, this material goes to the composting facility. Then does the city get back, you know, X amount of compost that residents will buy, or we can go out to the Dresser Road site and haul it away, or? What's the benefit for the resident? Well, um, we've discussed a couple of different options that residents can go and pick this up and then reapply it to their lawn. Mm -hmm. it, the benefit is not having to do the work yourself at mm -hmm. home with maintaining a compost pile. The benefit is, of course, saving landfill space and mm -hmm. us all being committed to doing things in a better way. Mm -hmm. So that, that is an option that they can go to the landfill. Um, I, we haven't talked about whether or not there will be a cost for that or not, okay. but they can go and pick up the, the compost, the okay. finished compost. Michelle, my understanding is the 
Citizens Environmental Commission has discussed this and sees it compatible with the sustainability program yes. here at the city, which mm -hmm. ties also to the county's zero solid waste uh, uh, plan. Yes. So it's compatible. Yes, and I, I sit on both of those committees, so um, I'm, I'm able to, to make sure that both committees are always updated on the status okay. of the program. And I'm wondering if a champion might come out of that environmental commission. Yes, there's a couple people I can think of on the environmental commission that Excellent. would be great. Okay. Other questions? Alderman Snow. Um, yeah, I, I certainly hope that if there's a central com composting area that it's made available to residents to come out and pick up, and preferably at no cost. I think in order to get residents to participate, they're going to pay for to have it picked up eventually, or at least most residents will, um, that they need to see the benefit of not putting it in, in their regular garbage. Um, and also, it's pretty easy to self-compost. I mean, you know, depending on where you're at, I mean, some, some people don't have the yard space or whatever, but uh, we do have an area in our yard for comp compost, and it works very well and is very easy to do at home. Okay. Other questions of Michelle or Vaughn? All right. Thank you thank for you. introducing the program. Thank you for initiating it. We'll look forward to it. Moving next to the request for proposal for construction inspection and data collection services for the 2017-2018 street maintenance projects. I'll turn to City Engineer Leskowski. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. Um, this item is a Appearing earlier in the schedule than I typically would, and that's because with our new budget year, we're going to get started with the street maintenance program early in the year, earlier in the uh, the calendar year. So, what this proposal is doing is allowing allowing the city to begin letting the letting process of the street maintenance projects to occur several months earlier, and for the majority of those construction activities, then to occur between the months of May and maybe the end of August. Which, if you think about it, that's when the students are out of town, there's less traffic on the roads and hopefully there's less inconvenience for everybody altogether. Um, so we're, this is a, a, this RFP is going out sooner than it would typically and it's going to be for the 2017 and 2018 street maintenance program for data collection and construction inspection services. So it's kind of counterintuitive because the construction inspection actually occurs first and then the data collection in a, in a contract like this. So if you think about um, this year, for instance, we're finishing up the 2016 street maintenance prog program and simultaneously collecting the data we need to design the 2017 street maintenance program. So this RFP is going to be for the data collection for the 2018 and 2019 programs but it's going to be for the construction inspection of the 2017 and 2018 programs. So with that being said, um, the activities that occur within this uh, request for proposal are going to be um, the data collection includes um, the quantifying of how much curb or sidewalk needs to be removed, how many manholes need to be adjusted, and then including that into our, our plans and specifications for the project. The construction inspects inspection side of this RFP is going to be the day-to-day -day construction monitoring and inspection and making sure that the materials that we specified within the, the plans and specs are being utilized correctly, that they're being delivered on time, and that the project is being constructed in accordance with, um, with the design that, that we have. So um, essentially this is a, a request to distribute this, this proposal to qualified engineering firms that we've identified in the past. The, it's the beginning part of the qualifications-based selection process. So there's no cost to the city at this point when we distribute the proposal. We're simply going to be interviewing three to four firms, um, deciding which one of those firms is the most qualified for the task at hand. Once we identify that firm, we'll negotiate a contract with them, and at that time we'll bring that contract back before the city council to see um, for their consideration. So. With that, um, this is simply a request to distribute that uh, proposal to the qualified firms. Are there questions for city engineer Leskowski? Hearing none, do we need a motion? Just uh, directing staff. So hearing no opposition, I'll uh, assume that's direction for staff to proceed with the RFP. Thank you. Thank you, John. 
With that, I'll uh, turn to any public participation. Does anyone wish to speak to council at this point? Seeing none, we'll move on. I'll request a motion to approve to hold an executive session to discuss personnel, collective bargaining, and deliberations regarding salary schedules as provided for in 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C1, 5 ILCS 120 slash 2 C2. Is there a motion? So moved. Moved by Alderman Marquardt. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Alderwoman Nareko. Um, roll call, please. Jacobson? Yes. Finucan? Yes. Marquardt? Yes. Snow? Yes. Nariko? Yes. Favor? Yes. Ray? Yes. Seven yes. Thank you. Motion carried. And it's our intent to reconvene for the six o'clock uh, regular meeting. Thank you.